Howdy howdy! Over the years, some McDonald's items have been huge marketing failures and have been discontinued altogether. So which of these items drew controversy? Which ones just tasted terrible? And which ones were just stupid ideas from the start that never stood a chance? Let's investigate. These are the 10 crappiest McDonald's failed items. Why McCrappiest? Well, I've always wanted to use that word. As we go through, I'll explain what happened to these items. And if our sources don't tell us why they were cancelled, I'll give you my best explanation of why I think they were. Anyway, let's begin. Number 10. Onion Nuggets. Behold, the true predecessor to the chicken nugget. Personally, I like the savoury, salty taste of onion rings, but I think I prefer chicken nuggets. McDonald's made these onion nuggets to try and please vegetarians way back in 1975. They were basically just diced onion that was breaded and deep fried. But the onion nuggets were never a big hit with customers. Something was just not quite right. Apparently, customers still preferred the traditional onion rings over onion nuggets. And when chicken nuggets hit the scene in the early 80s and broke sales expectations, they rapidly replaced onion nuggets completely. Now obviously, we're not going to find a 1975 taste test on the internet for onion nuggets. The internet didn't even nearly exist back then. But apparently, these onion nuggets tasted quite similar to the Texas Tunyon from the Longhorn Steakhouse, which are crispy fried onion petals. Apparently these fried onion chunks are perfect for dipping. What do you mean we have a sauce? How is that possible? Apparently Good Mythical Morning covered these. They took McDonald's onion and refried them just as they were in the 1970s ads. And what do you know? They really liked them. The problem they had with traditional onion rings is when you bite them, the onion would string out of the breading, but with onion nuggets, they stayed intact so you could enjoy the fried breading and the onion at the same time. You are right. This is an onion ring that has been made easier to consume. So maybe if McDonald's tried bringing these onion nuggets back, they could be a real hit with the modern audience. The McStuffins. You know, Hot Pockets were a big trend in the 80s and 90s. And in 1993, Mickey D's wanted in on this trend. So they made the McStuffin, which was a sort of Hot Pocket, or maybe a calzone? Either way, with a name that unpleasant to say, it's no wonder they were a commercial flop. McStuffin. God, that must sound horrible on headphones, sorry. Also, obviously, it's not related to Doc McStuffins from the Disney Junior show, though that is a good show. These McStuffins were basically just a little French baguette that was stuffed with pepperoni and cheese or teriyaki chicken or barbecue chicken. Its commercial claimed them to be the best things since sliced bread, but it's hard to overstate what a failure these things were. In fact, the McStuffin didn't even last a year before being removed. And it's a shame because I personally think these sounded delicious. Delicious. I don't know about you, but I want to know how these things tasted. It might give us some insight into why they failed so badly. But they were around for such a short time that it's hard to find anyone that actually tried them. Luckily, they recreated the McStuffins on Mythical Kitchen almost identically. Josh and Trevor carefully followed the admittedly vague 1993 commercial in order to make themselves some authentic McStuffin. Oh. Jeez, that's a terrible name. They started by making some spongy French bread. Then they put a hole in them and filled them with McDonald's cheese, barbecue chicken, and processed beef. They rebake them and what do you know? They look like a lot like they did in the commercial, but a lot better. And the big question here, how did they taste? It's okay, but it's nowhere near as good as a Big Mac. And that right there really captures the issue, I think, and why these probably failed. McDonald's probably said, if the burgers taste better, why bother? Based on what Josh and Trevor did, these looked really difficult and time consuming to bake and cook. The original ad claims they were baked fresh, but can you honestly imagine every McDonald's suddenly baking fresh bread every day? Yeah, no, me neither. And I don't think they would have thought it's worth bothering if they don't at least taste better than a Big Mac. It looks like they're busy enough in there as is without baking bread on the side. But I can't deny, apart from their terrible name, the McStuffin sounded really tasty. I would love to try it. If you ever happen to recreate and try these yourself, let me know how they tasted. Number 8. The McAfrica. Oh my. This wasn't just bad timing on McDonald's part. This was one of the biggest marketing disasters in McDonald's history. The McAfrica was first released in Norway and Denmark and immediately drew criticism because it wasn't exactly a burger of great cultural and humanitarian sensitivity. No. 
mainly due to the McAfrica's name and the timing of its launch. The ingredients themselves weren't exactly offensive. It was just a beef, cheese, tomato and salad burger with a sort of pita bread. I don't think this was all intended to be offensive. Apparently this burger was based off a similar authentic African recipe. The problem was it was released in 2002 during one of the most intense famines in South African history. The name McAfrica itself was criticized for being insensitive particularly since it was released in Norway, one of the richest nations in the world. At the time, a Norwegian aid organization was in South Africa trying to give food out to the 12 million starving people. In regards to the burger's release, they said, We have nothing against McDonald's, but the timing of this is insensitive. Apparently, McDonald's apologized, but didn't immediately pull the burger. Instead, it allowed aid agencies to put up posters and donation boxes in McDonald's restaurants restaurants where McAfrica was being sold. And personally, I think that's an okay compromise as it's helping raise awareness of the problem that way. The spokeswoman for McDonald's said, We are sorry the name of this product has offended many. We acknowledge we have chosen an unfortunate time to launch this new product. Well, that's among the most superficial crappy apologies I've ever heard, but I mean, I wasn't exactly expecting something sincere from McDonald's, so whatever. Sorry. Still, McDonald's did not exactly take the hint. They tried to release the McAfrica again in 2008, this time as a Beijing Olympics promotion. They made some minor changes, like Africa was correctly spelt this time with a C. Good idea. It was released alongside the McAmerica, the McAsia, and McAustralia, and all of those are a real mouthful to say. I guess Maccas really liked that McAfrica recipe, but it wasn't much better received than the first time, so it seems like they learned their lesson the second time they pulled this. I think it's worth mentioning though, not all the press on the McAfrica was bad. Organizations like the African Youth in Norway appreciated McDonald's using Africa's name in a positive manner. So it's not just seen as a continent of war and poverty, and I totally get that. I can't deny I enjoy learning a bit more about African culture, even if it just starts with a simple burger recipe. Number 7. The McDLT the old McDLT was introduced way back in 1984. The whole idea of the burger was to keep the hot and cold parts separate until you ate it. So they put the burger parts separated in an unusual looking styrofoam container. And yeah, I get the logic they're going with there. If they're put together immediately, the burgers can get soggy. They even got the Seinfeld star Jason Alexander to explain slash sing about it. I'm talking quarter pound of beef on the hot hot side. And the hot! Why was everyone singing? But I think the main problem was, McDonald's was giving you a fast food burger that you needed to assemble yourself. I mean, I think the whole appeal of fast food is that we're served a sandwich that we can eat right out of the packaging. No assembly required. So when the McDLT came out and people were served both their salads and meats in separate compartments, well, not everyone was amused. People were outraged. Sort of. I'm opening a burger, not an Ikea flat pack. I don't like it. And I miss polystyrene packaging, but there were big concerns about its environmental impacts. In the 90s, people started to get more aware of our planet's health and the impact we could have on it. And one of those environmental concerns was the effects of styrofoam on the planet. But the problem was is that paper wrapping couldn't insulate the ingredients from each other. With paper, you'd still get that soggy burger. So when polystyrene turned out to be an environmental issue, Mickey D's was duck out of luck. So by 1991, the McDLT was discontinued. Hey Josh, hmm? is there any... Oh, why is it called that? Well, apparently, it's meant to be McD, obviously McDonald's, plus L for lettuce and T for tomatoes. McDLT, as they say in the commercial, hot, beefy McD, cool, crispy LT. <laughs> Oh boo, grow up you goose. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Number six, the mighty wings. You know, chicken pieces seem like an easy win for any fast food chain, don't they? Just deep fry them, jack up the prices and sell them in a combo meal. 
but as we will discover, larger chicken pieces have just never sat very well with McDonald's customers. Back in 1990, McDonald's tried to compete with KFC by introducing the Mighty Wings. It was basically more the type of chicken you'd find at a KFC. It was bone-in chicken with quote-unquote bold spicy breading. Much like the chicken nuggets, they came in three, five, and ten-piece packs with dipping sauce. I guess they thought, why go to KFC when you can get both your chicken and your burgers right at Mickey D's? With all the success they'd seen KFC have, McDonald's was super confident that these mighty wings would be a big hit. But strangely, sales were sluggish in the first few months, so McDonald's dropped the price of them to try and unload their massive stockpiles of frozen wings. But sales were slow, and by 2003, the Mighty Wings were completely removed from McDonald's menus. But in 2013, McDonald's intended for their Mighty Wings to make a mighty, triumphant return. And the executives were somehow even more confident this time. So confident, in fact, that they stockpiled 50 million pounds of frozen Mighty Wings. That's a lot of chickens. Unfortunately, this led to what is remembered as the Great Mighty Wing Flop of 2013 where apparently they didn't sell nearly enough of their 50 million pounds of chicken. They sold a lot of it, but not nearly enough to justify their giant promotional stunt. In fact, Macca's was forced to dump nearly 10 million pounds of leftover chicken. Ugh, what a waste of perfectly good food. There were two big reasons why the Mighty Wings failed. Some thought they were too expensive. For example, CBS News said, Three wings for three dollars was too expensive for customers, even though the Mighty Wings were far beefier than the average chicken wing. Sounds like a freaking amazing price nowadays. Yeah, but things were way cheaper back in 2013. <sighs> yeah, no doubt there. The other problem was a spice. McDonald's advertised their wings as spicy and bold, but some people complained they were too spicy. So yeah, expense and spice. The McDonald's CEO even agreed with these two reasons. At a conference, Don Thompson said, One dollar per wing was just not competitive at the time, and the wing's flavour was slightly spicy for some customers. Yeah! My personal opinion? I think McDonald's didn't realise just how powerful KFC's reputation was. By 2013, KFC had spent more than half a century being the unquestioned giants of deep fried chicken, and the Mighty Wing just couldn't match that. So I think when people wanted fried chicken, they just went to KFC. McDonald's even tried chicken again one time with the Chicken Selects, but they failed as well. I think people knew that when they wanted chicken, they went to KFC. But if the customers wanted burgers and fries, I guess they went to McDank's. Da -da 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 -da. Number five, the banana caramel pie. Now, I consider the McDonald's wiki a relatively valid source of information on McDonald's products, but I'm going to get Nin to read to you their description of the banana pie verbatim. The banana pie is only sold in tropical areas with high primate density, such as Southeast Asia. It is known to be popular with macaque monkeys. Humans are legally prohibited from eating the banana pie. They can only purchase it after signing a contract stating they intend to feed it to a hungry monkey. What? Is that seriously a thing? Why can't humans eat it? This is the stupidest- Oh, oh, banana caramel pie. My mistake. This one was actually sold in my country, Australia. And personally, banana and caramel are actually my two favourite flavours. I bet I would have loved this. But what was that thing we read about banana pies? Anyway, this banana caramel hybrid was a lot like the apple pie pastry. But instead of apple filling, it was filled with banana custard and toffee caramel filling. This was actually the same filling they used in their banana caramel McFlurries. I believe that was also an exclusive to Australia. But this whole banana caramel phase might have been inspired by the movie release of Minions Rise of Gru. A movie I had zero interest in seeing. Apparently, ugh, minions even got in on advertising with signs like this. Ready to go, bananas? No, I think I'd rather grind up every blathering minion I see into a blender. But how'd this banana caramel pie taste? 
Well, some fellow Aussie reviewers tried it on Birdoo Food Reviews. Certainly from the outside, the banana and caramel filling looks delish. They describe the taste like this. Imagine if you got a banana and you sort of bake it for a bit and gets oh. all soft and mushy. Mm -hmm. It tastes like that. They also mentioned a sweet aftertaste from the caramel. Nice. Why these desserts disappeared is a mystery to me. The McDonald's wiki had completely blank articles and the banana pie had, well, the monkey thing. Monkey! So if you do happen to know something I don't, feel free to mention it in the comments. Really, only monkeys. Do -do 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 -do. Brownie melts. Oh, these look decadent. Much like the name implies, these were brownie bites drizzled in hot chocolate syrup and icing. So murder on the colon, but downright delish to eat. But these brownie bites were discontinued around 2009 to 2010. Outside of very limited information from the McDonald's wiki, it was surprisingly tough to find any information on why these brownie melts disappeared. But I think I got some clues when someone posted about them on the TalkBass forum. When they mentioned they missed these brownie melts, replies included, They sound revoltingly sweet. Something like that would kill me dead. Sad face. Freaking diabetes. Angry face. Or on Antec forums. I'm gonna take a pass on a 500 calorie dessert with 20 grams of fat and 50 grams of sugar. That's it? That's all the fat? That's actually pretty good for brownie melts. Honestly, if most Americans did just think these were too sweet or too unhealthy, respects for their self-control. Perhaps even the fast food audience just found this one too sweet. If you look at the General McDonald's dessert menu nowadays, it's generally vanilla ice creams or vanilla McFlurries with some Oreos in them. Perhaps after a burger and fries and soft drink, most customers found the chocolate brownie melts just too much chocolate overload. And even if kids like them, parents might have found it a little bit too much sugar to be giving their kids in good conscience, particularly after a fast food meal. But the magic question, how'd they taste? Well, given these were released 14 years ago, my sources were limited to the ancient days of the internet. The ancient days when we all still hung out on MSN Messenger and internet forums. So let's travel back to some ancient posts to find out. Maverick tried both the brownie melts and the similar cinnamon melts. They said, The consistency in taste isn't always consistent. The brownie melt was mediocre, but the cinnamon melt tasted like warm cinnamon. Fortunately, we can also find some answers if we go international to Japan. For Japan has a sweet tooth that cannot be matched. And they tried this one quite a bit. And they had these brownie melts on the menu for quite a while. The brownie melts were released from 2017 to 2020 for 330 yen. I believe they were reviewed by a non-English speaker, so I've slightly corrected the punctuation. Warm sweets are perfect for cold days. The chocolate sauce has a more bitter taste than expected, but it has a luxurious taste. It goes well with coffee, a slightly mature, bitter richness. Eh, sounded a little too sweet for my taste. And for number three, the McDonald's Omelette Bagel. When it comes to breakfast, Maccas hasn't deviated much. They tend to stick to your basic coffee, McMuffins, hash browns, and hotcakes. But in 1999, they did try expanding this breakfast further with the bagel. And honestly, the bagel's flavors sound like a welcome change to the Egg McMuffin, which personally I've always found gack-inducing. Breakfast bagels could come with steak, ham, egg or cheese, and even some fancy Spanish spices. The most exotic of their bagels was probably the Spanish omelet bagel, which was topped with sausage, pepper jack and cheese. And then they put on an egg stuffed with peppers and onions. Ugh, for a breakfast, honestly, it all sounds way too heavy for me. It sounds like I'd be revisiting it within an hour, and not in a fun way. But a McDonald's spokesperson was confident that their bagels would take off. Hey y'all, breakfast sandwiches like the Egg McMuffin have been long-time favorites. We are confident our customers will enjoy bagel sandwiches just as much. But, well, they didn't. Is there anything else? What do you mean, that's it? They just failed? People just didn't want diner food at McDonald's? What? Uh, 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 but, but the real top three is... The Hula Burger. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that felt woefully inadequate. The Hula Burger was the not-so-great idea of the McDonald's Corporation founder, Ray Kroc. 
1963, Ray challenged his buddy Lou Groh. Their contest was to see who could make a better meat-free sandwich for the Christian Lent, which is meant to be a time where Christians eat no meat. But fish is okay, which I've never understood, but whatever. Anyway, our buddy Ray came up with a hula burger, which was simply a piece of grilled pineapple with a cheese on a bun. That's it. While his buddy Lou came up with the filet o fish. Hey. But the Hula Burger was not produced for long, and may well be the true biggest failure in McDonald's history. Lou sold over 350 filet o fish burgers that day, while it's estimated that Ray sold about six of his pineapple burgers? Poor Ray. I guess back in the day, he'd have had to console himself by being the owner of the most powerful fast food corporation in the world. Yeah, it sounded like he had a very successful life in, like, every other aspect. Burger making just wasn't his thing. I'm sure he could console himself on his mountains and mountains of money. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Number two, the McGratton Croquet. How about a little taste of overseas? Sure, why not? That's always nice. Let's visit Japan this time, which is known for being pretty open-minded and out there with some of their food choices. But even Japan wasn't able to stomach this McDonald's product. I mean, just look at it. Does it look appealing? When you list the ingredients, it sounds even less appealing. The burger contained ground shrimp, mashed potatoes, and deep fried macaroni, all mushed together into a patty with cheese. Ugh. And according to the McDonald's wiki, it was topped with quote unquote mystery brown sauce. Oh. Threw up in my mouth a little bit. I mean, where is my imagination meant to go when I hear the word mystery and brown in the same sentence? Now you may be thinking, I've seen more attractive things in my toenails, but what do we even make of this commercial? How does that make anyone want to eat a burger? Oh, that commercial didn't give me hunger, it gave me existential dread. And the filling looks like pigeon statue art, I've got to say it. And I know you could argue, hey, at least it's made of fish, that's healthy. And maybe fundamentally the ingredients are healthier than a hamburger? But jeebus, they don't sell me these things on appearance. So why'd it fail? Why do you think? It stinks. It stinks. According to Japanese Stuff Channel, it was known in Japan as the Krokoro, and it was mostly a burger eaten on cold days. Before it was discontinued, Critical Eats Japan gave it a try. He bought it for 670 yen. Apparently, he really liked the taste. He couldn't see any macaroni in it, and he kind of missed having meat in his burger, but he said it was pretty decent. I mean, the inclusion of mystery brown sauce was enough to put me off forever. Why not just say gravy? And the honorable mentions for this video are a couple I've mentioned before in the past, so I'll be brief. The McHot Dog, the McSpaghetti, and the McPizza. I talked about these ones about a year ago in the worst fast food failures, so I left them off the list. Plus, they're still sold in a few locations, so they're not exactly discontinued or cancelled. Anyway, what's our last choice? Number one. The McDonald's Deluxe Burgers. I've actually wanted to talk about these deluxe burgers for a while. In the 90s, McDonald's wanted to better capture the adult fast food market. So they started marketing their deluxe burgers. These deluxe burgers were more <clears throat> sophisticated burgers for our sophisticated adult palates. However, these deluxe burgers turned out to be one of the most expensive marketing flops in McDonald's history. Either for their kid or for themselves, I feel like a customer knows they want McCrappy when they go to McDonald's. And I think McDonald's pretending to be sophisticated didn't convince customers for a second. But these deluxe burgers weren't just meant to be more adult, they were also meant to be healthier. Take the McLean Deluxe in 1991. Apparently at the time, nutritionists were attacking McDonald's for their unhealthy menu. So since popular culture was doing the low-fat trend at the time, McDonald's made the 91% fat-free burger. They did this by using 91% lean beef in their burger and the addition of seaweed to the beef, aka carrageenan. That actually sounds pretty healthy. I bet it wouldn't be so bad if they can make it taste decent. Unfortunately, well, they couldn't make it taste decent. Customers were apparently left very unimpressed by the taste, so the item flopped. 
but not one to take a hint. McDonald's tried their deluxe line again in 1996 with a fabled Arch Deluxe Burger, which I swear has been included in every top 10 McDonald's list on the planet, so I won't bore you with it. Basically, the Arch Deluxe was McDonald's attempt to compete against the Burger King's Whopper, and certainly not the first time they tried to compete against it either. The Arch Deluxe had hickory bacon, onions, tomato, ketchup, lettuce, cheese, mustard, and mayonnaise. So very similar to the Whopper. And the budget on this deluxe campaign was huge, at a whopping $150 million. In ads, people were commenting on Ronald McDonald going around doing more adult stuff, such as going dancing at the nightclub, or golfing for some reason. Gee, I mustn't be an adult then, because golfing is boring to me. But I couldn't get by this person in the ad right here. Oh, he's even cooler now than he was before. I love how even a paid actor can't hide how stupid it looks that Ronald McDonald is dancing at the disco. Anyway, they went all out. McDonald's even commissioned music specifically for these ad campaigns. Apparently this music was made to appeal to the 18 to 34 demographic. So I should like it until next year. Then I may mysteriously suddenly say, oh, suddenly I hate this music. Anyway, a lot of these deluxe burgers got a quote unquote upgrade. Like the filet fish deluxe or the grilled chicken deluxe. For example, deluxe burgers were served on a bakery style roll and had fresher vegetables. Like whole leaf lettuce and freshly sliced tomatoes. Plus those healthier 91% lean beef patties. I honestly would have liked to try these, but apparently these burgers tasted dry and were soon nicknamed the McFloppers. And by 1998 to 1999, the deluxe burgers were discontinued left, right, and center until finally in 2000, the deluxe burgers were officially taken off the menu, never to be seen again. I think we can learn from this that people don't like fancy at McDonald's, or they don't like McDonald's pretending to be fancy, either way. And if you think I missed a canceled McDonald's food, or you just feel like saying hi, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching, and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Sweet Wolf Steve. They ask, what's my favorite fast food restaurant? In terms of the one I eat at the most, I'd say Subway. I also tend to eat at kebab shops a lot and just get the kebab bowl. I got a sensitive stomach and I find a Subway wrap doesn't leave me feeling quite as crappy as say a bunch of greasy KFC chicken and fries. My favorite wrap is probably sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Thanks for the question.